Welcome back, everybody, to the Love It Podcast. The concept is pretty simple. We get to chat to people who do what they love. Um, we've been pretty fortunate to have some really cool people on uh, over the past couple of weeks, and today's no different. Um, all, that, all we ask is that you can just get on, uh, write a review on our Apple Podcasts, and it allows us to get the caliber of uh, people on board that we're about to have on. So I'll roll the intro, and we'll get into it. As always, in the co-seat, we've got um, JT. JT, what's doing, Russ? Paulie, good, Russ. Um, hello to all the uh, listeners and the viewers out there. Thanks for tuning in. Um, Paulie, special guest uh, today. Uh, we have um, none other than 2016 uh, Sevens Player of the Year and still the second best player in the family behind Sam, Charlotte Kaslik. <laughs> how are you? I'm good, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah, um, a bit of time off um, these last few weeks. What have you been up to? Um, yeah, since the Olympics, I've been lucky to stay in Queensland for a few weeks, so or like a couple of months so far. Um, so I've just been training with the Queensland Reds girls. Um, they've got a pretty good setup and sevens program going. So yeah, I've just been training with them and heading back to Sydney this weekend. Oh, Charlotte, a bit dusty. Big, big one last night. Yeah, <laughs> I'm running on a little bit of sleep, but that's okay. She's a champion, eh? Um, so talk to us about, uh, we usually get people to talk about, obviously, the start obviously where they are now and then everything in between. Do you want to take us back to where it all started for you? Uh, yeah, so I didn't really think I'd play rugby um, when I was growing up. Um, my brothers played. Um, I was like around rugby a lot, but yeah, never really thought I'd be playing. Um, played a lot of touch footy and other sports. And then um, when the Olympics came around and they um, started like doing recruiting with other sports to try and get more girls involved, uh, I kind of made the transition then and, I actually started my first game for like 15 inside rugby was with West. So, ah. yeah, it started kind of here. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It kind of was just like a natural progression. I kind of went through all the pathways once I made that switch over. Yeah, so you grew up here um, in Brisbane. Um, where about did you go to school? Um, I went to Brisbane State High for high school. So it um, was obviously a good rugby school. But when I was at um, in year 12, they wouldn't like let us play rugby and yeah. they wouldn't put a girls team in. And then the year after I left, they sort of got started with the girls. And I think they've got a pretty good program now. Oh, yeah, nice. So before that, um, when you were at school, a bit of touch? Yeah, a bit of touch, played hockey, athletics. Yeah, nice. Um, yeah, did heaps of sports growing up. I think I read somewhere that um, athletics, you were an 800-metre champion, weren't you? Yeah, I was in primary school. Oh, yeah. primary school. <laughs> yeah. Wow, wait. Is that um, like, na- like national National champion, champion Holy yeah. heck, yeah. Um, yeah, year five, six, and seven. Yeah, yeah, and then just sort of gave that up. <laughs> or yeah, I just a get... three peat. <laughs> <laughs> um, I used to get really nervous. Yeah. Um, and I'd be like on the starting line, like in tears, like hysterically crying. And they'd always. <laughs> Before I was the like, start. Yeah, I was like 12. Yeah. Which was like pretty traumatic. Um, and the starter would always be like, Are you okay? And um, it was almost like, I don't know, I just. I don't know why I got nervous. Like my parents didn't put pressure on me or anything. I think I just yeah. had a lot of pressure on myself. Um, and then for some reason when I play touch and rugby, I just don't really Get feel that. that same sort of nervousness and pressure. So that's why I chose touch. <laughs> <laughs> Holy heck, what do you think that is? Like just growth over time or? Uh, I think because yeah. it's a team sport. So like mm. obviously the yeah. pressure is shared amongst everyone. Um and, yeah, I don't know. It was more fun. Yeah, yeah. I like the social side of it. So would you ever think you'd go to Olympics for sevens growing up doing uh, athletics and, and stuff like that? No, not at all. I think originally I wanted to be a hockey roo. Yeah. Wow. Um, so when I was playing hockey, I started playing hockey when I was five, um, and that was when the hockey roos won in 2000 at the Olympics. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I was, like, obsessed with them. Um, and then kind of that was probably, like, where my Olympic dream started. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, I gave that away when I started playing touch. Yeah, wow. Yeah, and um, so we talked to a few people. Like um, I remember, uh, you know, guys like Rich, even um, there's heaps of examples of people who start in touch and then progress through to, you know, high level in, in rugby or league like Sean Johnson and that. Is that just because um, there's a lot of transferable skills from, from touch that come across uh, for natural playmakers, you know, like yourself and like those other guys that – yeah, I think so. I think Richie played at 
um, like a Trans Tasman tournament when um, it was my first one in Mudgee in yeah. like 2011 or something. We were both there. Um, but yeah, it's, I think so, like the general ball skills and uh, like agility and spatial awareness and stuff, I think carry over really well. Um, but then, I don't know, when I play touch with rugby players, I hate it. They just suck. <laughs> Because oh, like, there's nuances to it. Yeah, like, like, they just don't get it. No. And it's so frustrating. They just suck. I hate <laughs> like even at school we used to put in like a mixed touch team at all schools and the boys were so don't bad. I was yeah. like, you just don't get it. Yeah. Um so yeah, but no, I think going from touch to rugby is great, but not the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, so how did that journey begin? Um going from touch to rugby. Uh, was it an email I think you got from uh, Rugby Australia sort of thing? Yeah, we got like a letter just inviting us to do a training camp. Um and then I went and I hated it. Um, and dad was like quite supportive of like trying to keep me involved and um, giving it a bit more of a go, like not just writing it off straight away. Um, and then, yeah, I kind of kept playing. Like we played a little bit at school, played Queensland schoolgirls, and then I'm at like a youth Olympic festival as well. Um, but I just couldn't tackle. Oh, yeah. yeah. A bit like Paulie here. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you have other players. On yeah. the <laughs> um, <laughs> and so, obviously, you transitioned through to there. Um, was there like a – did you fall in love with Seven straight away? No. So did, yeah, yeah. I hated it. No, I didn't hate it. That's a lie. Um, I just didn't like tackling. Yeah. I don't know what it was. Like, oh, I was really scared. Um, but, yeah, once I kind of, like, got good at tackling, I – Started to like it. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it was pretty embarrassing, like, when I just <laughs> couldn't tackle. Yeah, yeah. If there was something I had about sevens, it was the, the fitness side of things. Um, how are you with that? No. Obviously, really? <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, obviously, coming from athletics and a sporting background, you know, it would have put you in good stead. So how would you find all, all that? Yeah, that's probably, like, my favourite part. It comes very naturally to me, I think, obviously – my 800 meter champion days, yeah. you know, they like <laughs> get their time to shine in free season. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, ah, uh, yeah, it's just like natural to me. Like I can get fit really quickly. Yeah. Um, and I think like I love training hard and I love that sort of feeling of bearing yourself. So I think that's sort of why I like sevens because yep. um, you're challenged all the time. Yeah. Was there, was there sort of a moment where um, you thought, no, hang on, I'm actually pretty good? At sevens, you know, I might be able to make a career out of this. Um, well, when I first started playing, because we'd always put like touch teams into the sevens tournaments. Yeah. Um, and like when we had the ball, we were awesome. Like no one touched us. And then Steve. we just had to like <laughs> yes. hold on hold to the, the ball, ball. <laughs> <laughs> and not get tackled either because we weren't very good at rucks. <laughs> um, so I kind of knew then that like I was would have was going to be good at it. Yep. Um, yeah, I just had to learn, obviously. How to tackle yeah, yeah. rocks um, and the rules and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, mm. what, what, what was one of the ways you learned how to tackle? Um, do you remember that sand pit at Ballymore? Oh, yes. Yeah. That, yep. and it's like <laughs> yeah. so gross. Um, <laughs> Alicia Quirk and myself, we were both shit at tackling. Um, <laughs> we used to have to go into the sand pit like every day and, oh, and just, just tackle each tackle other. Each other. Um, and the oh. girls – uh, when I first started, were awesome. Like they were so supportive, and like after training, they'd all be like, "Okay, everyone, like run line up, <laughs> yeah, let's go help Charlotte learn how to tackle." Um, and yeah, they'd all come and yeah line up and let me practice over and over. I think it was like passing and all of that sort of stuff that comes naturally to me. Like I love yeah. to do it all the time. Um, so yeah, I just had to you know practice it like anything, I guess. Influences on your career. So um, obviously, there's a lot of a lot of young girls, probably and boys too, they look up to you now for what you've done in, in the code. Um, was anybody that was that person for you coming through? Um, well, because there wasn't girls that played before me. It was pretty hard. But, like, I loved Quaid growing up yep. and now we're friends. So um, I have, like, a photo actually when I was one of my first rugby games with Quaid, yeah. like a fan photo. <laughs> um, so now it's, like, pretty funny looking back that um, we're pretty good friends now. Um and but yeah, I think like Emily Cherry in terms of women's rugby, even though she was only a couple of years older than me, she made the transition seamlessly from touch to rugby. Um, and she made it look really easy. So then we all kind of followed in her footsteps, and it wasn't as easy <laughs> for the rest of us. Um, but yeah, she was sort of 
always like one of my role models, even through touch. Um, and yeah, then into rugby, but I guess it's kind of weird cause she was always like a teammate. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she was probably the first one that made that transition. So yeah. It's funny talking to someone who always, um, he's always pretty quick to drop your name. Like, oh, that's one of my, it's one of my OBs. <laughs> well, it's, it's good to see that's not the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, I love Sammy too. <laughs> um, so if we just fast forward a little bit, I want to come back to your, your roosters, um, yeah, your roosters days. But um, if you think of 2016 uh, Rio Olympics to obviously what you experienced in Japan, two totally different um, experiences. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Obviously, COVID. Yeah. Um, but like in terms of the experience with playing, it was completely different. Um, in Rio, we just had like a group that. Uh, like we'd played together for so long, um, like Quirky and Emily and I, like we literally like didn't even have to talk to each other. We just like knew what everyone, like we were on the same page. And then I guess due to COVID um, in Tokyo, like I had played with some of the other halfbacks for one minute before, literally one minute ever on the field together. We trained together obviously, but like we'd only ever played like one minute together (laughs) before we got to the Olympics and we were like on the field like, oh. Um, so yeah, it was just like different in the terms of like the lead up, um, the, like the game time that we'd had together and like the experience of the group. Um, but I think like it was heartbreaking, like it was Mm. the worst ever. Um, but I think that group of girls will learn a lot from it. And, um, I think the like journey to Paris now is going to be awesome. Like they've got so much talent and there's like so much depth in Australian rugby, um, for girls. So I think like yeah, they'll learn a lot from that experience and hopefully carry that, like, heartache into Paris. I guess, like, the um, Kiwi girls did from Rio into Tokyo and, like, they really – you could tell that that was, like, driving yeah. them to success and, yeah, hopefully we can do the same. Yeah, you mentioned the uh, 2016 team and all the experience that you've had playing together. I think um, when you started in 2013, most of those girls were already there, yeah. Um, so how was that for you to, to debut with, with all those girls? Yeah, it was awesome. Like they were – like we lived together. We were like best friends and we yeah. started – so when – like in touch you obviously like have to pay to go and play for Australia. You get given oh, like right. – yeah. yeah. Um, and then like Australian rugby was like paying us to like go to Amsterdam and London and yeah. all these cool countries and we were doing it all together and like we were all best friends and like it was just, yeah, the best experience. And then we obviously all moved to Sydney at the same time yeah. to become full-time and then um, we'd been through so much as a group in general that I think, yeah, that like really made us closer and everything was just really easy. Yeah. So how old were you when you, you signed with them? Uh, 18. 18. So you moved away from home, 18. Yeah. With all those girls. How, how did you adjust to that life? How did you find that? Um, yeah, I'm pretty independent, so I was fine. Yeah, yeah. And like I lived with Emily, Cherry and Alicia Quirk yeah. um, when I first moved down and then, um, yeah, we just had a lot of fun in Sydney. And <laughs> yeah, nice. That was most eighteen-year-olds. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we lived on the northern beaches. Like, yeah, it was oh, an wow. awesome. Yeah, it was a great yeah. lifestyle. And um, yeah, like I said, we went from paying to play for our country, yep. getting given like a few red frogs or something <laughs> um, for lunch, and then we like were in this getting paid to play rugby. It was amazing. Like we were just yep. living the dream. Yeah. And then um, leading up into uh, the Olympics, um, when you got named in, in that, how uh, was that sort of a, a dream come true? Well, a late dream, I guess, because <laughs> rugby wasn't really in the sevens until then. So, um, Yeah, it was. I think, um, like, obviously I was, like, a starting player for, like, the few seasons leading in. Yeah. Um, so when Walshie told me that I was going to the Olympics, it was still, like, I don't know, it was, like, exciting for me. And then I rang my parents and I was like, oh, I'm going to the Olympics. And they were like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, so they were like, yeah, they're yeah. like, well, like, obviously, like, you've been playing like <laughs> yeah. for three years or whatever in the team. Um, and I was like, yeah, but like, it's still it's exciting. exciting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was like very anticlimactic, but um, yeah, no, it was awesome. Like, the whole Rio experience was amazing. Yeah, and just um, putting rugby to the side when you got to the Olympics, um, was it everything that uh, you've ever heard about it? Watching all those other sports and seeing other athletes. Yeah, How we um, so we finished on day three of the Olympics um, oh, yeah. and then we had like almost two weeks there yeah. to just yeah, go yeah, and right. do whatever we wanted. So we were just like the ultimate Australian Olympic team fans. Like we went to every sport yeah. um, and in Rio they kind of – it was like a bit loose. Um, <laughs> so you could 
pretty much just like print out a sticker and put it on top of your um, lanyard um, with whatever oh, just, code for the sport it was. So like yeah, yeah. rugby was like R U G, and then like basketball would be like yeah. something yeah. to B K B or something. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you just like print them out and stick them on yep. your lanyard, and then you could like go into the sport. They thought you were like an athlete. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, we could get into everything. Um, yeah, we went to so many different sports and just supported everyone, and it was yeah really fun. Yeah, nice. No, Sam always speaks about how he uh, met KD at the last Olympics. Yeah, so did I. Yeah. And Kevin was at, um no sorry Samu was acting as if they were like boys. boys yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then but KD smiled in my photo and he didn't smile with the boys. Yeah. So <laughs> I think he's actually boys with me. Yeah. <laughs> Was yeah. It, yeah, I was going to say you are slightly better looking. There's one in the reason. That's the reason. Um, was there anyone anyone you met in the 2016 uh, Olympics? Are you like holy shit? Um, we saw like Usain Bolt oh, a few times, shit. which was pretty cool. Like he just like stand on his balcony all the time. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, Did he have all the girls in his room? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Um, I think some of the hockey girls snuck up there. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I think the Switzerland team or some <laughs> team is partying with them. <laughs> um, yeah, and then like Rafael Nadal was on like a similar – he must have been on a similar training schedule, so we'd always see him like going to the bus. Yep. Um, but I don't know, in Rio we were like so focused on what we were doing yeah. Yeah. that like I probably didn't enjoy that part of it yeah. as much as Tokyo. Like in Tokyo I was probably a bit more like yep. relaxed and um, – I was older, so I kind of appreciated it more, I guess. And like, yeah. yeah. Um, but Patty Mills in Rio um, is like absolute legend. Like he's literally yeah. like yeah, the best person I've ever met. Yeah. Um, and he was so supportive of us and then, yeah, like remembered us from Rio in Tokyo. Oh, and like yeah, he was awesome. like, um, one of his cousins plays seven, so he like loves it and yeah, yeah. yeah really gets around us, which is cool. Yeah. He seems to be the, um, the ultimate Aussie, yeah. You're like yeah. Even in Tokyo, like everyone. Just loving everything Paddy was doing and he just he got around everyone. Yeah, literally. And he's like so passionate about Australia yeah. and representing Australia. Um, and yeah, he just like gives off this energy that's just like so proud and yeah. I think everyone kind of yeah. gets around it because they're just like, I don't know, like I find him really inspiring and just the way that he like leads the group and mm-hmm. like the culture that the Boomers boys have is just like really cool. They just look like they're – they obviously come together for a short period of time, but they just have – they look like they're having a really good time, but they're, like, so professional and yeah. um, obviously really successful. You get, the, you get to meet the cool people like uh, Paddy Mills. Was there anyone that you met and thought, <laughs> what a knob? <laughs> the swimmers. Oh, really? No, I yeah. should say that. <laughs> the Aussies. <laughs> yeah. They win all our medals, so, like, you have to like them. But yeah. <laughs> they know they win all our medals. Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? It's almost like the swim team and then the rest, day. Eh? Like, yeah. even in terms of coverage. Yeah, all, literally. All yeah, like, yeah. But they're awesome. Like, they obviously are. Yeah. Yeah. But they, like, would get really angry at us in quarantine because we'd get in trouble for, like, not wearing a mask or something by the police and then, like, yeah, yeah. they were like, oh, the rugby girls again, like... <laughs> <laughs> like tra- telling us to do the right thing and stuff. Yeah, it's full on. But so it was them who told on news about that plane trip. <laughs> no, I wasn't on the plane. Oh, sorry. It was the boys. <laughs> um, but no doubt, yeah. I like some of the stories you said, man. I was asleep the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there were some wild yarns that came out of that, but I'm not sure how many were true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you spoke about um, obviously the second Olympics. You appreciated it. Um, and that seems to be pretty natural. The more we talk to um, different athletes like yourself, they always say that at the start, pretty heavily focused. And, and then it's only when they look back, they think, man, I can't believe I had the opportunity to play at those places in and around the world or those stadiums or with those people. Is that a pretty fair um, kind of assessment? Yeah, definitely. I think like when I was 21, like the impact that by winning that gold medal that we had on women's rugby, mm. um, at the time I probably had like no idea really. Like I was a kid and I was just – doing what I loved. Um, and, yeah, I probably, like, had no idea about the impact it was going to make on the game. Um, so, yeah, now looking back, I'm, yeah, it's obviously, like, makes me really proud to be a part of that group and that group of girls that sort of changed the landscape of contact sport, not even just for rugby, like, across the board for contact sport, across girls in Australia. Um, yeah, it was pretty cool. And then to be able to do that, like, with all your best friends, like, it's just, like, such an awesome experience. Yep. And then um – Obviously, COVID happens, and you you sign up in um, twenty twenty four for the Roosters, yeah. 
Yeah. How did yeah. that come about? Um, yeah, due to the fact that we weren't touring or playing or anything, um, I just wanted to start playing footy. Like it was pretty boring not doing anything and just training. Um, and then, yeah, I don't really know. I think my manager just sort of sorted it out. Yeah. And then um, started playing and like one of my good friends, Yasmin, was in the team. So it was – I had a friend, which was nice because I was really scared. I don't know why. It was like going to a new school. I was so nervous. <laughs> um, was that yeah. your first time playing league? Yeah, ever. Holy yeah. heck. Yeah. yeah. Um, you didn't want to play for Broncos? No, I'm not a Broncos fan. Oh, really? No. Who I'm Cowboys. Oh, wow. North, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. My dad just hated the Broncos growing up. So, like, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just, like, never considered even playing for them. Yeah, yeah. And they're stacked. So, like, yeah. yeah. It was fun to go to, like, a – yeah, club that was you know trying to. Yeah, nice. Yeah, and um, didn't didn't end too well. Yeah, you got you got <laughs> injured. <laughs> yeah, I played like eighty minutes and then broke my back. Oh, shit. Um, it yeah. wasn't a serious break, but yeah, yeah, it sucked. So I didn't get to finish the season. Um, but yeah, it was still great. Like I loved it. It was so much fun. Yeah, yeah, and then um, b- bouncing back from that, obviously you went back to the sevens. Um, how how'd you find recovery and all that? And um. Um, yeah, it was all right. Like I, it was obviously disappointing because I wanted to do like the origin and sort yeah. of all of that as well. Um, and then, yeah, so that was disappointing, but the recovery was fine. Like I just went back into sevens and had a few weeks off contact and that sort of thing. <laughs> I <love> that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I just kind of got back into it. And I think, uh, by that stage it was probably like seven, eight months until the Olympics. So yep. we sort of just started that prep for that. Yeah. Just like how you said you broke your back, like how people graze their knees. <laughs> yeah, I just, broke, just my back. broke my back. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was like so hectic. Yeah. Um, we, like when it happened, um, my partner Lewis and like my friend Yasmin's partner Adam, they were there watching us and um, we like, they were staying in our place. They live in Scone. So they like um, obviously had to drive and yeah, anyway, they were staying at our place. And we were going out that night and I was like, oh my God, my back's so sore. But like, I just like, do you want to tell anyone? Because I wanted to go out. <laughs> Um, and then, like, the next day I was like, oh, my God, like, it's what actually, the hell? Yeah. And I went into sevens. So sevens were still, like, really supportive of me through that time. They didn't just, like, get rid of me. Yeah. Um, and I was like, oh, my back's really sore. So did you still go out that night? Yeah, I went out. <laughs> and then I woke up and I was like, oh, my God. Um, and then, anyway, I, like, had to go into training and be like, my back's really sore. <laughs> um, and... Yeah, like yeah. obviously it was probably like way worse for going out, but whatever. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I got a scan because I thought it was a cork and I kind of thought it was a cork as well. Yeah. And then I got a scan and obviously the results weren't good. Um, but yeah, it was funny. Like I'd like, obviously like you can't do anything and I'd like go to the beach and whatever. And then when I was watching the final, like in the commentary, the commentator was like, oh, Charlotte's been at the beach and like she's obviously fine. And I was like, oh, oh God, yeah. this is so savage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, she probably saw me at the pub that night. But um, yeah, I was like, this is a bit savage. Um, but yeah, like the recovery from it was fine. It was like obviously not spinal. <laughs> <laughs> spinal. <laughs> I you going to say you, had a, you broke your back because you're carrying the theme or something. <laughs> <laughs> Um, one thing I wanted to ask you about is uh, Tribe and how uh, that came about and how it came up. Um, I heard was because there was there was no pathway for for you to put a, a team together. You want to talk about how that all came about? Yeah. So um, my dad's obviously like the most supportive dad of all time. He like founded a rugby club purely because he wanted to help me play rugby. Um, but at the time, you kind of had to play like fifteens and sevens if you wanted to play sevens or rugby in general um and like myself and a few of my friends didn't really want to play 15s uh we just wanted to play sevens (laughs) um let's tackle (laughs) but really um so yeah dad like started tribe um and then it eventually like became kind of like this sevens i don't know like touring team that it was like almost like a development team for the australian side and um he like obviously made like a good connection with the Australian coaches and then if um, boys and girls weren't touring with um, Australian Sevens, they'd kind of slide into Tribe and he'd take them to like Dubai, France, um, Amsterdam, Vegas. Like they went to like all these awesome trips and I was yeah. always in the Aussie team kind of like, like what? Oh, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> like they're having so much fun over there. Yeah. Um, 
we also have heaps of fun. But yeah, yeah. like they just have like such a good group and a really like oh, sorry my voice. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, they just – oh, my God. <laughs> Big night last night. <laughs> <laughs> um, they just, like, ended up attracting, like, all these really supportive people around rugby and I think um, that kind of, like, made me fall in, love, fall in love with the game even more. Like, we had, like, the Bennetts um, that would do everything just because they loved rugby and um, obviously my dad was just doing it for the love of the game and the coaches and everyone that it attracted were just, like, really good people and, um, yeah, it just became, like, this – Great team to be a part of. Sweet. We'll just take a water break. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Charlotte, so just talking about uh, Tribe, did you or you and your dad expect it to take off like it did? Um, not really, I don't think. Like, um, yeah, I think it was just like an opportunity for me to start playing early on and then um, obviously my transition from when I started rugby into the national side was quite quick. So I didn't actually have to play much for Tribe, which was a shame. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I don't think so. I think my mum – was probably like not as happy about it taking off like it did because oh, they'd obviously have to like go on like all these rugby yeah. trips and um, so really it was because he wanted to <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He wanted to travel. <laughs> yeah pretty much like I Louis was when he snapped his Achilles after the Olympics he did a bit of coaching for Tribe as well oh, yeah. um, during that period and like yeah like him and Dad would be in Vegas and yeah. just like living Vegas lifestyle. Yep. Um, I don't know how much coaching was going on. Um, and just, yeah, they went to some pretty cool places. It was, um, yeah, it's a bit of a shame that it's, I guess COVID kind of interrupted it, like with mm. the ability, mm. like no one can travel and yeah. the Sevens tournaments all sort of died down. So they haven't played in a while, but I think they're trying to make a comeback. Yeah, nice. Mm. Speaking um, of Vegas, some of the best places you travelled? Um. Vegas is awesome. Like I love Vegas, yep. but when you're there for rugby, it's different. really different. Like mm. it's kind of sad in a way at times Like you are walking to training at like 10 a.m. through the casino and oh, there's right. like, yeah, people just like. It doesn't sleep, putting, does it? Nah, Vegas. like their yeah, livelihood down the drain. Like and you kind of like yeah. walk past obviously sober and you're just like, well, this is, yeah, a little bit sad. It's like a place of like broken dreams. Like all the Uber drivers and stuff are just like yeah, yeah. came there for like. To be, I don't know, the next yep, yep. big thing and then end up, yeah, obviously not achieving their goals or whatever. Yeah. Um, but it's so much fun. Like, yeah, when you're there for post tournament, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much fun. But yeah, Amsterdam was awesome. We don't play there anymore. Um, but that was always one of my favorites. Yep. Um, uh, Dubai is always great. Yeah. Um, um, being being um, a Fijian, one of the you know, Fijians' favorite place. To watch rugby or watch the Fiji team is at Hong Kong. Did you did you enjoy Hong Kong? I've never been able to play. So oh. um, the girls used to play there before I started, and yeah. then like when I got on the team, it we didn't play there anymore. And then last year was the first time it was back, and obviously COVID ruined yeah. that. Yeah. So yeah. hopefully next year, like yeah, this yeah. season, we're back in for Hong Kong. So yep. um, yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. I'd love to go there as like a spectator though. Like I think that would be yeah yeah the ultimate tournament. sevens tournament. <laughs> Outside of footy, what's um I know there's a bit of a connection with farming. Yeah, Louis and I bought a cattle farm in 2016, I think, um, which is pretty random. I like, obviously didn't grow up wanting to be a farmer or a rugby player, <laughs> and here I am. Um, but Louis, <laughs> Louis um, grew up, and that was like his dream growing up. So yeah, I've sort of just jumped on board. Yeah. Um, and we obviously got smashed by the drought um, pretty early on in that little – Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Endeavour. <laughs> yeah, which wasn't ideal. Um, but, yeah, it's awesome. Like, I love it. I think, like, there's lots of connections between, like, obviously sport and farming, like, in terms of the community aspect of it and, like, helping your mates out. And um, I guess now I've, like, learnt so much about farming and I'm pretty passionate about – kind of like educating people around where their food comes from and um, all of that sort of thing. Yeah. That's um that's quite the transition, though. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> how many uh, how many cows do you have? Um so we probably have like about 80 breeders. Oh yeah. Um and we're calving at the moment, so we've got some really cute calves on the ground. Yeah, yeah. Um and then I bought 10 of these like they're called Southern Highland cows. They're like yeah. those really fluffy ones. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can like brush and stuff. Oh. So Lewis is like, that's not my thing. That's 
yeah, you're on your own there. <laughs> but like, um, they're so cute. I'm obsessed with them. Um, do, you, do you have names for them? Because cows, they're known as numbers. Like, they call them yeah. numbers, yeah? Um, a few of my breeders, I like originally I started naming them, yeah. which I don't think you're meant to do. But like, yeah. um, so some of them do have names. Yeah. They all look the same. So it's quite hard to like, yeah. you know, tell them apart <laughs> at times. Um, but yeah, they, some of them do have names. Um, and then all my fluffy ones are named. Yeah, yeah. And how does it? Like, does it take much to maintain them? Obviously, like, you know, you got to feed them and then obviously hooving as well, yeah? Um, yeah, like, we have to, like, drench them and give them, like, their injections and, yeah, yeah. Um, like, yeah. mark them, brand them yep. when they're calves. But otherwise, they're pretty self-sufficient. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, um, sorry for all the silly questions about farming. But <laughs> closest we get to farmers probably buying some milk from the shop. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> One thing you you said there about um, your carving at the moment. So, yeah. so a lot of the people who listen to this probably think it's their calf muscles. So, <laughs> do you want to just touch on what that actually? Uh, carving's is? just when um, the cow gives yeah. birth to a baby. Uh, yeah. There you go. Um, yeah, so it's like usually try and yeah keep them all pretty close together so they carve at the same time, um, but. Yeah, because it's they obviously were impregnated by a bull. <laughs> um, and there's a few of them for him to get through. Like it's, yeah, a little bit spaced out. Like it takes a couple of months for them all to carve down. Um, <laughs> is, is it just a you, two, you two out there? or do you, um, there a- My mum – so my dad grew up there. Yeah. Oh. Um, and mum and dad have recently moved back out there. Yep. Um, and then my uncle and auntie – are still living in Stanthorpe as well, which is where we are, and they're capskin farmers. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we've got a lot of help and support, um, yeah. especially through the drought when we couldn't get up to, like, Queensland all the time that like, my parents would drive out and feed my cows for me, yeah, which yeah. was, yeah, obviously really nice that they did that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so what does a normal day look like for, for Charlotte Caslick? So uh, when you wake up, do you, do you do things the same way um, or mm. is it you're pretty – Pretty loose and just <laughs> just go with the, the flow? Ah, uh, yeah, I um, just go with the flow. Um, I thought you had to take a few photos with the Range Rover first. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm really bad with my Instagram content. Um, yeah. What's this Range Rover story? <laughs> I'm not sponsored by them anymore. Oh, so well, then. Oh, I was well, for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um. <laughs> COVID, eh? Uh, yeah, it's ruined everything. Um, but no, what's my – I don't know. I wake up – when I'm up here, it's probably different to in Sydney. Um, but at the moment I just sort of wake up um, because the girls I train with have to work during the day up here. So we usually start training like a bit later. Mm. So, yeah, I just wake up, <laughs> cruise around for a bit. <laughs> um, I have started journaling. So I do that in the mornings. Um, like I kind of write like my goals for the day, yep. whether I achieved the ones from yesterday, what I'm grateful for. Um, so that's sort of like one thing I try and do in the morning. Um, and then uh, I'm trying to do like a lot more stretching. So I do a bit of that and yeah, I go to training. Um, <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, so when when does uh, camp start back up? When do you head back? I'm um, going back next week. Yep. And um, then we fly to Dubai on the 21st of November. So um, I'll probably be in Sydney for about three weeks training and then yep. get to go away, which was exciting. It's been like, I think, two years almost since we've travelled. Yeah, wow. And then um, after Dubai, you got Dubai again. But um, in, the, in the sense of bigger tournaments, I think you've got the Com Games and the World Cup coming up. Yeah. Sevens? Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, so that's sort of towards the end of the season next year, yeah. um, which will be a big year. Um, the World Cup's in Cape Town, so, like, yep. that'll be epic. Mm. Um, and then there's the 15s World Cup as well yep. after that. Um, and one of my teachers, Sione, he's just been appointed one of the coaching jobs. So oh, wow. um, it's kind of tempting to try and maybe – So you reckon it's, make it's a, time, eh? Maybe – I don't know. Yeah. I'm a bit unsure. Yeah, I don't know. That's the problem. I can't kick. So that rules out a few (laughs) positions. Um, I don't want to tackle, so that rules out another couple. (laughs) Maybe you can just help Sione coach. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But, yeah, like I think it would be awesome to obviously like he was such a huge part of my early like – State high as well. State high. um, 
he'd like let me train with the first 15 when he was coaching them and oh, stuff yeah. like when I was 16 17 and um obviously coached me with touch since I was 13 so then to like be able to play at a world cup mm. I guess under him would be yeah. pretty cool and yeah a special experience so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if I can figure out a position to play maybe <laughs> was netball ever on the cards no yeah. um it was the same time as hockey so yep. um yeah I don't know why but I think my nana wanted me to play hockey so I played hockey yeah yeah um, you mentioned the, the Dubai Sevens. I don't think the New Zealand team would be going. Um, coming up against them, what's what's that feeling like? And um, seeing those those girls, those big <laughs> girls. Um, who's your, who's your uh, favourite opponent to play or most feared opponent? Opponent, sorry. Um, Portia Woodman's definitely. Yeah, um, she's like she's amazing. Um, yeah, she's so good. Yeah. Um, in um, Oceania, leading into the Olympics. Yeah. Um, I was sweeping and she was like kind of like about to make a break and I was like running really fast and (laughs) what I thought I was and I was like oh my (laughs) god like I'm gonna like I think I'm gonna tackle her which is like a big deal for me because I don't really tackle her very often um and then it literally happened so fast and I was on the ground and then my back was sore for like four weeks (laughs) afterwards because she like bumped me off so hard like I yeah, like I literally had like the worst back for literally four weeks afterwards. Um, but yeah, so there's been a few of those times with Portia. Yeah. Otherwise, she just runs around me. Um, I'm her. probably like on her highlight reel a lot, just like <laughs> <laughs> running beside her or getting bumped off. It'd but. be an honour to be on. <laughs> <laughs> um, but honestly, there's so many players in that team that are probably like once in a generation sort of talents that um, we've been unlucky to yeah. or lucky, you know, to, yeah, face yeah. off against. You got them early in the, in the Olympics 2016. So yeah. Good, but. Um, yeah, and I think like our young girls are like they usually win like in the youth stuff. So hopefully yeah. we're yep. coming That's back. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and saying that you got a few, a few young girls coming through, anyone to look out for? Um, yeah, there's heaps of them. Like I think um, like Demi Hayes had a great Olympics. Yep. Um, she's sort of like one of the senior players in that group now, but um, she's still really young. Yep. Um, there's the two Levi girls from Queensland. They've just been signed recently. Um, and they're like so talented. So like once they're, I think, in like the full-time program, they're just going to, um, yeah, absolutely shine, I think. Like they're Tegan's um, the youngest one and she's – just got like a lot of um I don't know how to say it without swearing but like I don't know I swear she's you know like I, don't, oh, <laughs> yeah, oh, I can't <laughs> no like you know like she's got like a lot of cunt in her like she yeah, just yeah, like yeah, fucking yeah. tries really hard and like <laughs> yeah that's the one like rips in all the time and like <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know um really competitive and then Maddie her older sister is just like super athletic fast yeah. um plays on the edge and like yeah um, so they're really different sort of players and people, but like they both offer heaps to our squad. Yeah, is Elia still going around? Um, I don't know what Elia's plan is. She just was on the SAS. Yep. Um, so she's oh, just filmed shit. that. Yeah. Yeah. How's she? How's she to play with? Uh, oh she, yeah, she's, she's awesome. She's a beast, yeah. She? yeah. Um, she's just one of those people that like creates something out of nothing, and yep. um, yeah, I'd sort of just like pass her the ball, and she'd always finish right. off really yeah. well. Yeah. Um, and she's a beautiful person. So, yep. um, yeah, she's, yeah, a really special girl. She's been through so much and she's so resilient. Um, we obviously really missed her at the Olympics. And, um, yeah, she's just, I think, obviously on field she's amazing, but off field she's just like Better, yeah. one of the best people I've ever met. So on this end we always think, um, you know, four women sevens is either Australia or New Zealand. Um, as the women's game is, has obviously grown, what – what are some of the nations that you've seen that have obviously developed and have quickly risen to the, you know, to the same levels or, or close to the same levels as um, New Zealand and Australia? Well, Fiji, when they beat us in the Olympics, that sucked. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, they've, like, they've yeah. been awesome the last, uh, like, before the World Series got cancelled. Like, they were, yeah, really starting to hit their straps and then obviously in the Olympics they were awesome. Um, and then... <laughs> Um, like Canada's really good. They had a terrible Olympic Games, but um, they're yeah, like pretty good. USA, um, even Russia. Like I think the nations that mm. like get behind obviously Olympic Games, they put funding into it, and um, yeah, they just obviously have a huge talent pool, and 
a lot of people to choose from and a lot of athletes and um yeah so I think like Russia and USA are probably up there obviously England's um yeah, yeah known mm. for rugby and they're pretty good as well but I think yeah Russia and USA are kind of the two that you wouldn't really expect yeah, nice um moving forward what's next for Charlotte uh, well, obviously you've got um sevens and hopefully 15s world cup <laughs> anything outside of that that you you're looking to try and achieve um, either on the field or, or off the field. So um, <laughs> I don't know. I want to go to the Paris Olympics. So I like definitely want to keep playing yeah. rugby until then. Um, and then I would like to stay in rugby uh, when I finish playing. I've obviously been kind of based a bit more rurally in my like off season and stuff. I've spent a lot of time in country towns and meeting yeah. country kids and people. And I think there's like a massive um gap in Australian rugby that like doesn't really reach rural towns and like rural communities so like I'd love to kind of bridge that and hopefully yeah I don't know start something that kind of gets country kids and um I guess kids that are a bit more isolated into rugby and um not just playing AFL or rugby league yeah it's just about opportunity for those kids because eh? yeah there's obviously massive <laughs> well Queensland's obviously geographically pretty pretty big so yeah. Those yeah, and like I guess if they don't go to boarding school, they kind mm. of miss out on a few of those opportunities. And obviously, um, my parents have been so supportive, and I've been like gifted so many great opportunities that yeah, I'd love every kid to kind of like, that'd be a dream if every kid in Australia had yeah. the same opportunity that I had. But I, unfortunately, it's just not the case. And whether it's um, geographically or um, yeah, other factors that kind of weigh in on that. But um, yeah, I'd love to kind of work in that space and hopefully I don't know like I love rugby and I love the game and especially sevens I think is like would be great for small towns because you obviously Mm. don't need as many people so (laughs) um, I think it's something that like hopefully they could get behind. I think one thing they could do um, I don't know if you agree with me Charlotte is you see a lot of sevens tournaments around um, all the main cities here Brisbane, Gold Coast, Sunshine Coast but maybe taking those sevens uh, tournaments um, to rural Queensland or something like that do you think that'll be? Yeah that would be awesome I know dad like we're obviously living in Stanthorpe and he'd love to have a tournament out there yeah. um, there's been like Roma sevens which is usually yeah. a pretty big hit um, so yeah I think it would be great like it yeah. obviously um, exposes rural towns to rugby and yeah. um, kind of gets yeah I don't know it's good for both it's nice for everyone to kind of give back to those communities as well as yeah showing them how fun sevens is real common theme throughout since we started chatting is uh, obviously the influence of your parents so that's obviously been a massive foundation or part of of your success yeah definitely I get asked a lot like um whether like my parents were supportive when I first started playing rugby and like my I guess the people around me and like I've never had a problem with like no one's ever told me that I shouldn't play rugby or like that girls can't play rugby like it's never been a problem for me um which I guess I'm really fortunate with um so yeah my parents have been awesome they've yeah given me so many great opportunities they love coming to watch me play like they there's like heaps of parents in our squad that there's like tour around <laughs> following us um so um hopefully when I have kids one day they're also playing in cool countries and I can go watch them um yeah. but yeah I'm yeah really lucky with the support network that I've had yeah, and I, off the field, um, we spoke about kids. So, Lewis, he's uh, planning to get married soon. Yeah, so we were meant to get married last year and then we were meant to get married this year and yep. now it's postponed again till next year. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's unlucky, eh? Yeah. 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 Um, um, how did you ever find that balance um, with, with rugby and, and sort of home life? Um, well, Lewis is obsessed with cows, so, like, he honestly, like, talks about farming and yeah. cows and stuff way more than he does. So it's not all rugby. Rugby, rugby, rugby. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. we don't really spend much time talking about rugby. Um, we're very different players as well. So I think like we've probably learned a little bit from each other, yeah. not by telling, but like just kind of watching. And um, he's obviously had a lot of injuries and stuff that he's been through. So yeah. Um, yeah, I think there's like been parts of things that we've learned from each other, but yeah, we kind of keep it pretty separate. Um, we don't really yeah talk much about rugby. I guess that's always the, the balance, though, way. Eh? Like, cause you both know what you guys do on the field, so it's it's always about everything else outside of that. Once you guys catch up, yeah, pretty <laughs> much. Um, and like, obviously, all of our friends are kind of in rugby, so like, naturally, it does. We do talk about it, um, but we also don't have like, um, like KO and stuff at home, so we can't really watch rugby yeah. <laughs> on TV. <laughs> so we just sort of like, yeah, pretty zoned out by it. But um, 
it's also nice, I guess, to have someone that understands and can like relate to like the lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of uh, care and that, you watching anything on Stan or anything at the moment? Do you have any of those streaming services? Yeah, well, um, I'm excited for Yellowstone to come out. Yeah, just quietly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it seems like it's been taking ages. Um, yeah. But no, I haven't really been watching. Since I've been in Queensland, I haven't really been watching much TV because I'm kind of out and about doing things. But once I get back to Sydney and I'm training um, full time, I spend a lot of time <laughs> sitting on the couch. <laughs> Fav- favorite character on Yellowstone? Um, Beth. Uh, oh, she, <laughs> yeah, she's uh, she's solid, isn't she? Yeah. <laughs> My S and C told me that I reminded him of Beth once, and I was like, <laughs> like slightly offended. I think I don't know if it was a compliment or not. I was kind of like, oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's been awesome. Uh, we're probably close to to wrapping up. Um, Do you have anything else? No? <laughs> uh, but I really just wanted to thank you for your time. Um, especially backing up off, off a big <laughs> night. Uh, really grateful for having you on. Um, just wanted to wish you nothing but the best uh, moving forward, uh, both with, with the farm and um, and obviously with the, with the Simmons program and hopefully 15s. Um, so, yeah, thank you for coming on and all the best. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it, Charlotte, and uh, all the best for the upcoming Sevens tournaments. <laughs>